JUnit test. In addition to add test, there are a few more annotations which are present in JUnit. In this step, we'll look at them quickly. One of the important annotations is something called at before. At before is one of the annotations which is present in JUnit. So I'll say public void and I'll do a sysout to be very easy. So sysout control space, I'll say before. I would want to actually add in something. So I'll say test one and I'll call this test two. So now let's go ahead and run the test. The shortcut is all shift X run J unit test is T. So all shift X T also runs the unit test. So you can see that before is running test two, before test one. One of the important things with J unit is there is no guarantee of how the tests are run. So this test can be run before this test or this test can be run before test. All that JUnit guarantees is the test will be run. The order is not really guaranteed. But the thing which is guaranteed with add before is the fact that the before would be running before every test. So if you want to do something before every test, like you want to establish a new connection to the database or something of that kind, you can do that in the add before. So add before test one. So you can see that in this example, when I'm running only test one, before and test one are running. If I run the entire test, so let's run the entire JUnit test again with two tests. So you'd see that before method is invoked before every test. So before method, next the test. Before method, next the test. Similar to before, there is something called after. So let's, the name of the method does not really matter. What matters is the annotation. I'm doing a command one to import this and this should be called after. All shift X, run JUnit test. So you can see that before, test, after. Before, test, after. So the after method is run after every test. So if there is some cleanup that you would want to do after every test, then you can do that in the after method. Similar to the before and the after methods, there are things called before class and after class. Before class and after class. There's a small thing that you need to do before these pieces of code would compile. One is import the before class, command one, command one, after class. However, if you run this right now, you'd see that there would be an error. So it says initialization error. Why is there an initialization error? It says method before class should be static. One of the things that you need to remember is the fact that before class and after class are class level methods. So they are applicable for the entire class. And all class level methods should be static. In JUnit, before class and after class should be static methods. Right click run as JUnit test. That's it. So now I'll have to differentiate. So I'll call this before class and after class. Now, let's see what happens. Now you can see before class, before test two, after. Before test one, after and then after class. So the before class and after class are run before all tests. So before any test runs, before class would be run. After class would be run after all the tests have completed execution. Probably things like establishing a database connection might be things that we would do in a before class. Initializing some data for the test, probably something that can be done in a before class. So in a before method. In this step, we looked at few important annotations that are related to unit tests. One is before and after. Before and after are run before and after every test method. And before class and after class, these are run once for every test class. The idea is not to really make you an expert on JUnit. As we do more examples with JUnit, you'd gain more expertise. But the idea was to introduce you to the JUnit framework and think about how you can make the best use of them. For me, the two important reasons why JUnit framework is famous and it's widely adapted is A, it's automation testing. So you can keep using it multiple times. I can keep running this test almost every day whenever there's a code change and I would be able to find bugs very fast. Also, another purpose why JUnit can be used is whenever you are learning something. So whenever you are trying a new concept, you can write a JUnit test for it and try to make sure that you are understanding that concept really well. At in 28 minutes, we really believe that JUnit is a framework that all programmers should master. And we would recommend you to try these examples again 
and try to understand them really well. Until the next step, bye-bye.